Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Culture Eyes. It is me, McCuddy. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited. Season five, that means you like me, not me. You like my guests. So if you like us, hit the notification bell, uh, subscribe, and do all those wonderful things. If you're watching us on TV, old school, thank you very much for doing that. If you're listening uh, to our audio podcast, tell your friends about it. Uh, this is a space where we create to talk culture, share talk, learn, all those things, whether it's native, whether it's ethnic, whether it's social. Uh, so let's get involved. You got any comments, comment down below. I'm uh, very humbled and privileged uh, this afternoon before I introduce her to you. Uh, this is a cultured show. Uh, so this is the way we begin our space. Mahalo. Mahalo, Ilono. That was the Kanaka Kid. If you want to see his uh, YouTube, go to Kanaka Kid. Uh, validates his existence because he shares Olelo uh, Okala, he shares Olelo Noyao, and he just tells you what it's like to be a Hawaiian kid in today's society. Kanaka Kid. Mahalo, Lono, for that. Uh, in front of me now, humbled and privileged, Ku'ule Bernie. How are you? Aloha, I'm well. First of all, mahalo, for, mahalo for being here. Mahalo for taking time. Um, we're gonna do the whole local thing, and I know we talked about it first, but you know, local people, and, and whenever we we meet or we see people, uh, we don't even get their name first. It's like, hey, what high school you went? <laughs> yeah, I never went high school here, but I can tell you Lucky. where my kupuna came from. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, my kupuna come from Kohala. Oh, wow. From Nahiku on Maui, from Lihue on Kauai, uh -oh. and also from Manoa here on Oahu. Uh oh, we might be related. <laughs> <laughs> my, my grandfather is from Havi on Hawaii Island. My oh. grandmother is from Punene uh, on Maui. So you know how oh, that goes. I'm guessing the Havi is going to is gonna work <laughs> I, its way. I know, right? It's like Havi, who, who's. I remember uh, doing some genealogy and, and trying to figure out, because, you know, back then, all my grandfather would remember is, I was born in the Hale. No, they didn't have palapa, they didn't have paper. They didn't, you know, they were just some kid that was born in the Hale. I remember having to go to the post office, asking people, do you remember this family? Do you remember these boys? Da, da, da. But anyway, that's besides the point. But Javi, you know, it's Javi. it's deep when you're in Javi, right? That's right. Uh, he en ended up on Lanai. But I wanted to thank you for being here because I, I wanted to talk health, wellness, and, and healing, right? Um, you know, I was fortunate enough, I was blessed enough to, to learn healing practices. Um, I'm really, really lucky. I never thought in a million years that, that I would be utilizing healing practices um, as a career, right? A lot. It's so weird because people always say, what do you do? Like, what do you do? So my bread and butter, I'm, I'm at YNI Coast Comprehensive Health Center uh, during the day. Lucky enough that I got to study with the, the Kupuna Council there. Mm. And... Um, but I always say stuff like that would not have been possible in, in modern day Hawaii if not for Papa Ololokahi. Um, and if you're joining us, Papa Ololokahi, um, you've been with them. I've been there for 20 years now. 20 years. Mm -hmm. When did, explain to our friends that are watching what exactly, the best you can, what exactly is Papa Ololokahi? Simply stated, it's the Native Hawaiian Health Board, the Papa Ololokahi. Mm -hmm. And um, what, as we talked about earlier, our kuleana is for Native Hawaiian health and well-being. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that encompasses healing, mm -hmm. which I know is something that uh, we're going to like to talk about <laughs> yeah, exactly. a little bit. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, and it, if was it for them, because a lot, a lot of, there's, I'm surprised a lot of people don't know about Papa Ololokahi. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is a good analogy. The analogy I use is Papa Ololokahi is what OHA is to Hawaiian affairs. Papa Ololokahi is to health, wellness, and well-being affairs. I can right? see that analogy for sure. Uh, OHA is created by the state, mm. and Papa Ololokahi is created as a result of federal law. The Native Hawaiian Health Care Act was passed in 1988, mm -hmm. and it creates three, well, it that 
it creates the federal Native Hawaiian health care program. And there are three parts to it, Papa'ololokahi. Uh, there are five Native Hawaiian health care systems that provide direct and enabling services across seven islands. And there's the Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship Program. So it gives us an opportunity to address our, our purpose uh, is to raise the health status of uh, Native Hawaiians to the p- highest level. And so we do it through all these different strategies, right. partnerships, programs, and services. What um in 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 your, so so you you got you were lucky enough to grow up, um, off off island on island. You have mo'oku how you have genealogy here. Um, we'll get right into the next segment, but um, I want you to share what your background and how you got into Papa Ololokahi, <laughs> right? And and what, what made you choose that kuleana? If you're joining us, this is Culturized. We're talking uh, Hawaiian healthcare. We're talking health, well-being, and healing. Um, and that's what Papa Ololokahi does. And if, if not for them, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right here on Culturized. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHAYTHING. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HIFICU.com. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Culture Eyes. It is me, McCutty. This is where we get to talk story about culture, whether it's social, whether it's native, whether it's ethnic. And today, uh, kind of, kind of a, a topic close to my heart. Um, you know, growing up learning healing practices, uh, you know, through high school, and then I, I never thought I would. Why? Why? Why am I learning these things? Right? Um, to what I'm doing today in in why and I, but uh, it all goes back to Papolo Lokahi. When, when did that officially start? What, what, I mean, I know you said the well, federal, the right? The Hawaiian health movement uh-huh. probably started back in the early 80s. Uh, you know, well, you know, the Constitutional Convention mm-hmm. really helped to bring some awareness of Hawaiian issues mm-hmm. and some certain assertions by Hawaiian community. In the early mm-hmm. 1980s, there was the Native Hawaiian uh, Assessment, Native Hawaiian right. Study Commission yeah. mm-hmm. is what it was. And it was a congressional commission. And it took a look at health, education, uh, social status, you know, across the board. And they were just like, man, these Hawaiians. Well, <laughs> Well, the uh, it was published, and uh, basically the findings were, eh, Hawaiians are good. There's no issues. Really? Yeah. And then there were three members of that commission, and the one that really stands mm. out is Kina Uboid mm. Kamali'i. And she said, uh, I'm not too sure about that. Let's take another right. look at the data. Let's uh, compare it to what we know mm. anecdotally, and let's re- re-examine the data. So... They put out, she and two other members of the commission put out what is now referred to as the Minority Report. So there was Volume Uh. 1 and Volume 2. The Minority Report says, uh, actually, Native Hawaiians are not doing (laughs) so well across all of it education, housing, socioeconomic status, health status, and Native Hawaiians in their own homeland are not doing as well. Do, do you think at the time when they did that original study, was it, did they, did they, were they actually looking at Native Hawaiians by blood or Native Hawaiians by zip code? You know, I mean, you know that whole, right? Because yeah. as they say, you know, Hawaii is one of the healthiest states, but our people are the unhealthiest. Right, um, right. Well, they were supposed to be looking at Native Hawaiians, mm. you know, however that was defined. But I think the better question is, were they asking the right questions? I, I was, okay, that was another thing, because questions are so important. So um, let's go back a little. So w- w- with your background, what, when was it? Or Because you started, you said 20 plus years with Papalolokahi. Uh, where were you before that? Uh, I was at the Hawaii Primary Care Association, but uh-huh. I was working. Uh, uh, so one of the 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 one of the legs mm-hmm. of the Native Hawaiian Health Care Act is the Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship mm-hmm. Program, and the scholarship program was three pronged in right. those days. Kamehameha Schools uh-huh. administered it. Uh, Papa Ololokahi uh-huh. did the annual assessment, and when it was finally time, uh, the first scholarships were given out in 1991, and the visionaries in those mm-hmm. days funded. Uh, doctors, right. psychologists, right. <laughs> those that took the yeah. longest yeah. to get through school. Right. So it wasn't until 1997 that they said, 
said, well, we need to, there's this, a service obligation mm-hmm. attached to this scholarship. We need to, you know, have a full-time position to start placing these scholars that are coming out, out into the community. And that's what I did. So I were, I, I did the placement for the Native Hawaiian oh, wow. Health Scholarship Program. But... Uh, there wasn't funding to place a lot of them at the Native Hawaiian mm-hmm. Healthcare System. It looked like the federally qualified health centers was uh, going to uh, have better resources right. to employ the scholars as they came out. So I went to work for the Hawaii Primary Care Association, and I was there for six years. And then I've been at Papa for 20. And before that, because I know uh, where you're going, before that I was working, I was in the UH system, and I was working uh, for an RCUH project. Okay. And um, I was actually doing research and a few other things, but I was working with the departments and ministries of health throughout the U.S. Associated Pacific. So Guam, Saipan, Belau. Was, the, was that, did you always wanted to get into health? And, and no, what, what, like the admin no. side, the medical side? No, no. no. <laughs> really? I was in radio for, uh, for 13 uh-huh. years. But unlike you, it was all, well, Actually, I should ask you. For me, radio was always my second job. It's ne- it was never my bread and butter. Oh, I, I did the dumb mistake of making radio my bread and butter. <laughs> I, I worked for a Clear Channel for like twenty years. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Um, wow, that's interesting. So how? We're going to continue on that. English and communications. That's yeah. Same, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And it's funny how we end up into where we are. So mm-hmm. I want to talk how you how you got to where you are today. If you're joining us on Culturized, uh, don't forget hit the subscribe button, notification button. If you're listening on our audio platforms, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, if you're watching on KKI and all of our TV stations, mahalo for that too. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, hopefully, you like me. We're sitting with uh, Kuule Bernie. We're talking about uh, Hawaiian health wellness and healing right here in Culturized. Ashley is America's number one furniture store. We have everything you need for your home. Let the experts at King Windward help you out of your current loan or lease and into a new vehicle. Visit kingwindwardnissan.com. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Culturize. It is me, McCunny. I got to thank my good friend, some Kappa Kava, for giving me the ability to talk. <laughs> uh, if you are joining us, we're sitting with Kule Bernie, and we're talking about your journey, your huakai into um, Papa Ololokahi and, and, and just the health and wellness of Native Hawaiians. And it's funny. So you and I came from like a, the sim- similar backgrounds in, in communications. We went into radio. And then how, how did you end up going into getting into the health field? I I took a few jobs in order to uh-huh. be attached to the university, nice. and they were in the in the public health field. And you just mm-hmm. from there you and just I peeled just to that. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yep. Uh, I liked working. I liked traveling to the Pacific and mm-hmm. working in the community. But then, so I worked in the Pacific first, mm-hmm. and then I worked in Hawaiian community, which was much dearer to my right. heart. Um, and then I was completely peely. Wow! To the people, to the to the to the whole arena. And then, what was your first? So that you kind of basically realized your kuleana at the, at the time. You're like, okay, this is my health is my kuleana. Radio, cool, thanks. It was fun. Um, <laughs> what was your first kuleana at Papa Lokahi? Uh, I was uh, well. I left the scholarship mm. program. Uh, well, a little bit about the scholarship program. So remember I said earlier that it was being administered by the Kamehameha right. Schools, but then the Kamehameha Schools had to divest itself right. of all of its federally funded programs. Uh-huh. And the scholarship, the Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship Program was actually the last to leave the campus because the law had to be changed oh, that's um, right. because Kamehameha was actually named. Uh-huh. So um, so all the pieces came over to Papo Ololokahi, and I could have come over with it, but I did decided to take on some other special mm. projects and it just really has evolved and right about at the time that social media even beforehand mm-hmm. but when social media was growing and nobody was really uh-huh. doing that and um, for my work in the Pacific I was doing uh, we had developed a Pacific Islander caucus we were doing regular you know updates on resources opportunities jobs mm-hmm 
grant funding, you know, those just sharing information. And I just continued to do that for like, the Hawaiian what, health nice. community. And then was at this point, I've been able to create a whole hale wow. doing that. What is what? What's the top concern health wise for Native Hawaiians? Is it obesity? Is it heart disease? Is it diabetes? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know they're all up there. Mm -hmm. What what currently uh, has there been a change, or has it always been one certain type of mai? Uh, almost anything that's a chronic disease, which are those mm -hmm. that you've mentioned: heart disease, mm -hmm. cancer. Uh, those are where we're not doing so well. I, but you know, you asked what's the number one concern mm -hmm. for Hawaiians. If you ask Hawaiian healthcare providers, course, yeah. we might have a different, or public health right. folks, we might have a different opinion uh -huh. than what community uh -huh. folks feel are the issues. You know, sometimes people will say, um, "Taking care of my family." Mm -hmm you know, is my number right. one concern. And, and the, you know, the cancer care yeah. or the prevention or getting a mammogram is not high on the list. Right. See, I, 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 was doing a, I was doing a presentation at a conference one day and somebody asked, how, how do you know, how do you know when, when natives are unhealthy? And I, it, just, it just came out of my mind. I said, because um, our neighborhoods look like they're terrible. Mm -hmm. And they, they were like, what do you mean? I said, we, we can't upkeep our neighborhoods. If you go to a rich neighborhood, they don't have to worry about health care. They don't have to worry about health insurance. So they have time to clean their yards. They, they, you know? um, so that's why I ask is because you know, sometimes as Native Hawaiians and, and when we get mutty, um, there's, way, there's way more concern than, than us being mutty, right? Because mm -hmm. of course we're pakiki, we're, we're hard head, right? We're like, oh, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just going, I'm going to take some ava and I'm going to be pow, right? Um, if if you could pick in your manao, in, in, in what what's the first thing a, a native Hawaiian could do? Just let's say from the physical side mm -hmm. to make themselves better. Get regular checkups nice. with whomever uh -huh. one feels comfortable with. Get regular checkups so that you can catch disease if there is disease at an earlier stage. And in fact, that's one of the the three key findings of the Aola Mau reports mm -hmm. from 1985 is that Hawaiians were not accessing health care at the early stage. And by the time they did, you know, less could be done for them. So uh, I want to expound on that, too, because I always think it's, it's that Hawaiian concept of now nah, just going to ask my auntie. <laughs> right? I don't like a doctor. Gonna ask my auntie. Uh, if you're joining us, welcome to Culturize. We're talking health, wellness, uh, and healing. Uh, our good friends from Papua New Guinea are here. Uh, they have established. Uh, I know it sounds like a lot, but basically, this whole thing is about Hawaiian health and wellness and what you can do to make yourself better. Uh, so stay right here. It's Culturize. Culturize brought to you by Beachside Roofing, the leaders. Elevate your home's exterior to a whole nother level with Windows Hawaii low maintenance, energy efficient select siding. Call 808 671 0808 today. Rigel Kent Insurance, protecting your legacy. Hey, welcome back to Culture Eyes. It is me, McCunny. Thank you so much for joining us. We are talking health, wellness, and healing, something kind of dear to my heart. Um, Papa Ololokahi, responsible for facilitating, um, you know, we can get into the, the Native Hawaiian Health Cares Act and all those things, but I, I say just Google it. Right now we're talking about um, how you just said sometimes, no, let's just say a lot of times. I'm looking at you. Uh, a lot of times, as Native Hawaiians were, what... Have they figured it out? Are we afraid to go to the doctor or are we just lazy or what do you think? <laughs> so, trust is an issue. You're okay. absolutely right. Trust is a, is a, a big issue. Mm. In fact, the other one is uh, acceptability. Uh, mm. I, I think, you know, that's actually why the Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship mm -hmm. exists, so that we have more Hawaiians in the white coats. We mm. have more Hawaiian nurses mm -hmm. and more Hawaiian social workers and more Hawaiian psychologists. How, how's that looking right now? Uh, as far as, I mean, I've had some interns, I, I work with interns at, in YNI, so I got a lot of behavioral um, therapist interns that I've mm -hmm. been working with. And one of their, one of their cohorts is, is the cultural side, cultural approaches to, to what they're doing. And I, I'm, I'm excited to say that a lot of, they always have to fight for my classes, right? They're like, I want to go sit with, with McCunny. Um, 
with being at Papa Lokai for 20 years and starting with that scholarship program, what, do you see more Native Hawaiians becoming doctors and yes, therapists? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, if there was, this is the other thing. We we're talking about a tour with Vahilani. A lot of times you have Native Hawaiian opio. And, um, you know, right now, you know, there's a lot of PhDs coming out, mm-hmm. but PhDs in language, PhDs mm-hmm. in Hawaiian studies. What do you think in your manao? What, how, how do we convince these kids that, that we need? I just sounded old. I said these kids. <laughs> how, do, how do we convince these Native Hawaiian opio to get into more, prof- not more, pro- I shouldn't say more professional, but like things like that. Become a doctor, become a nurse, become a therapist. Um, what do you think it is that we, we or what's, is something Start missing? Start young. Mm-hmm. Well, there's convincing young people mm-hmm. to explore the health professions. Mm-hmm. And actually, White and I Health Academy is one of the first. Mm-hmm. It's an excellent model. I remember, model. yeah. And others, Farrington, Kauai, other schools have health academies People too. never believe me when I, I said, listen, Native Hawaiians, you, like, you want to become a doctor for free. You want to become a nurse for free. Right. So that's what blew me away because... As much as I told people about it, it's like filling out a scholarship. I could tell a thousand people, like two people would be like, really? And out of those two people, one would be like, give me an application. So I always think to myself, what, what's... That's a win. Consider yeah, that yeah. a win. No, it, it is, right? <laughs> it, it's a win, but I always think because I'm, I, as Hawaiians, we're such overachievers, I think, how do I get them? What's missing? Do, do, they, do they not think they can become a doctor? Do they not... Um, is, is there things out there that, that convince these kids, like classes or workshops? or You know, Kekuni Blaisdell, mm-hmm. class of 42, right. Kamehameha Schools, he was on the track to become an electrician. Mm-hmm. He tells that sto- he used to tell <laughs> yeah. that story all the time. And there was one teacher, one Hawley yeah. teacher, who said, you know, I think you can go I to think, college, right. encouraged him to go to college followed by medical mm-hmm. school, you know, fo- and then followed by an illustrious career, one that was full of giving right. back and creating the Hawaiian health movement. But he was on the track to be an yeah. electrician. So there's a systemic oh, Okay, that's, that's that the word, be yeah. Because I always, I, always I always like to use him in this example. I was, I was really lucky enough when, when he had Uahala um, Nalani, his daughter had called, and, and she said, I need help clearing out his library. And so, fortunate enough that we, we, I have some of his medical notebooks and whatnot. Brilliant. Of, we all know he's brilliant, but even more brilliant that his medical notebooks were all written in Olelo. And I was like, wow. Um, but he was that perfect example. You can be a Native Hawaiian. I mean, he started the sovereignty movement, but at the, he was a doctor, right? And I think more of our kids need to see that. Um, First of all, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo uh, for making time. If you're joining us on Culturize, can you stay a few moments? We, we want to talk a little bit more. Uh, head over to the extended version if you're on YouTube, uh, talking with Papa Ololokahi Ku'ule Birdie. Um, thank you for sharing your knowledge and sharing your, your iki and your, and your mana'o with us. We're going to get a little bit more into Hawaiian health, wellness, and healing. Uh, subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell, comment down below if you have any ideas, any questions about culture. This is where we do it on Culturized. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us. It is me, McCunny. Uh, this is Culturized, the extended version. This is where we get to swear. I'm just kidding. We're not going <laughs> to swear. Well, we can, but we're not. <laughs> we're not. We are talking about uh, Hawaiian health, wellness, and healing. Um, Papa Ololokahi, we take it all the way back um, to to our kupuna, Papa Awai. Uh, it was it was Senator Inoy, right, that helped. Absolutely, create and, Papa and Ololokahi. Senator Akaka. Um, y- you know what I like to, you know, for anybody who's forty years old mm-hmm. or younger, mm-hmm. because that's how long the Native Hawaiian Health Care Act has been around now. The only story that they've ever been told is that Hawaiians are sick and dying at greater rates than anybody else in Hawaii. So we are flipping that. Mm. If we're talking about Hawaiian health, the first thing we talk about is our ancestors mm. were awesome. <laughs> we And there are all kinds of records, uh-huh. documentation by, by Malahini. Mm-hmm. Granted, but documents of our statue, our skin, our pleasant dispositions, capable of great fatigue, 
we were in excellent physical shape. Mm -hmm. We had we uh, enjoyed a balance of spiritual, mm -hmm. emotional, and physical well-being. We were masters of fine arts and crafts and natural resource mm -hmm. management and so many different areas. And that's who we are as Hawaiians. It's see, I thank you for saying that because every time I work with my patients, I say it all the time. I go, we have to get back to the point where we're. Uh, our our mana or our initial thought should be pre-injury, pre-disease, right? And and right. and I get it. We we grew up in a Western society, and we we wait to get sick. Like I, I tell my patients, I said, if I ask you how many times you were well this year, you're not going to know. But if I ask you how many times you were sick, oh, guarantee you, tell me, right? Um, let's flip that. Um, and I think more, I think more, not just Native Hawaiians. I think natives in general. Need, yes. need to hear yes. that. And that's one of the things I, I like to include in w where I am in, in YNI is to get people to think pre-injury, pre-disease, right? Um, so when they, when they send me patients, it's, it's difficult though. It's hard. It's it's not. It's not. There's no instant gratification, right? I can You go to the doctor, and, and I'm truly. Uh, let me ask you this. Do I truly believe? there is a way that traditional practices in Western medicine can work perfectly parallel to of each course. other. Do you think that as well? I absolutely do. And Papa Owai did too. Right. Men, most of right. our practitioners. Mm -hmm. um, maybe put you on the spot, but if, if you had to talk to um, providers and other doctors, uh, native or non, um, what would you tell them about that? Like, th it works. So I've, I've been really lucky enough that there's a handful of doctors in Y and I that believe and trust in what I do. So I'm like, wow, how come everybody else doesn't think that? What would you, what would you tell a doctor? Uh, well, it's about building trust. Mm -hmm. So actually, we've done that in the past. We've mm -hmm. had several Hawaiian health-themed right. accesses mm -hmm. to Koho'olawe, and I'm thinking of one... I mean, I've taken some uh -huh. folks from Waianae Coast Comp, but uh -huh. I'm thinking of one in particular where we had Hawaiian physicians and we had Hawaiian practitioners. Mm -hmm. And when you're together camping for three days right. and walking and working uh -huh. projects and, uh -huh. you know, talking story, it... It's not, it doesn't matter what I say to them. What matters is that they're building relationships mm. to one another. Yeah, yeah. And then the next step, they go back home to their home islands and they're making referrals or right. they're calling up. I, you know, I, I, I don't have permission to name names, but I know that they're calling yeah, yeah. one another up yeah. and saying, hey, can you see so-and-so mm -hmm. or can I send so-and-so to you? Yeah. Um, and and this is long yeah. after that one particular access. And I think it's just about understanding one another's language, mm -hmm. understanding one another's perspectives and building the network of cross-referrals. Uh, I'm always I'm always a little bit biased because I always say any, any doctor, any MD, DO, PsyD, whoever they may be that comes into Hawaii to work, they need to be put through a cultural sensitivity, <laughs> cultural just to understand. Yeah. And I tell a lot of, even the, the workshops I do, I tell doctors, I say, listen, you don't have to you don't have to practice traditional practices. You need to understand it right. because if you're going to prescribe, you know, blood pressure medication to a patient, but they're at home taking Ha'awi or or mama or something, you're going to induce them into the coma. You need to understand those mm -hmm. things because. And you want them to tell you exactly right. You don't you, want you, them to you, hide yeah. it because of you have you know an opinion about that. Yes. You want them to tell you that. And and I, I truly I, I always say anytime doctors come into Hawaii, they have to no matter what. Yeah. They should go through this papalukai system and say, this is how, we're not telling you how to be a doctor. Well, it's at the medical school now. So Dr. Martina Kamaka mm -hmm. does this cultural competency com uh, curriculum. Right. And I know a lot of it's out at White and I, mm -hmm. but I've been able to be a mock patient uh, in the past where, my, I, let's say, I was assigned uh, to uh, tell the doctors in training that I had yeah. dreams of my mother and do you know that I nine like that. out of ten times it was reported on the records that I was having nightmares and 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 it wasn't dreams of my mm. you know the 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 role play was dreams of my mother but they it was interpreted See, by others as nightmares just had this conversation with one of my employees about taking notes 
I said, because I told him, when you sit with me, you take your notes from a Western standpoint, and I'm going to take my notes from a cultural standpoint. At the end of the day, we're going to compare the two, right? Because what Excellent. you're what you're seeing and what you're hearing may totally different what they're saying, right? I love that. If you are joining us on Culturize, this is the extended version. We can go on and on. I the, the whole concept of health, wellness, and healing because it's dear to me. But uh, kuule mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for making time. Um, we're uh, we're gonna see more of each other with, with Aha Ohana, right? Aha Ohana. Um, and I think. Uh, we got coming up. Ahawahini is going to be here. So uh, hit the subscribe button, notification button. Any questions about Papa Ololokahi, the Native Hawaiian healthcare system? There's a lot of things that can benefit you as a native. Uh, thank you so much. It's been a privilege. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you for joining us. This is Culturized. Mm-hmm.